welcome to Makers on Tap, the podcast where makerspace directors drink and talk about making stuff and maker culture. Tonight, I'm your host, Joe, and joining me are... Aaron. And Christian. And tonight, we're going to be spending some time talking about, of course, our maker news. But our main topic tonight is going to be discussing maker burnout. And this is kind of a common topic right now and something that i especially am really feeling so forgive me if this topic gets a little ranty tonight but it it might so with that uh what are you guys drinking i actually have some uh rodell's um midwest wheat beer that we got a growler on the other night so i'm actually have the last class of it nice Nice. in continuing the uh local breweries i am having a triptych dank meme uh, nice oh nice <laughs> that's actually pretty yeah. good i've had it yeah i like it so i was down at a um what was it eight bit earlier today at an event and so i got to enjoy it there and decided to pick up a pack on my way home nice awesome and i'm drinking some of uh industry brewing uh their nightcap porter which they just brought back and it's delicious got the crowler of it from maker night last thursday nice so uh aaron do you want to take our first maker news topic tonight sure so the the first topic that i found was um andre andreas spice um, he actually developed a HTTPS library for the ESP8266 and the ESP32 development boards. Um, for those who don't know, um, HTTPS is a, an encryption protocol. It uses secure, socket, uh, secure sockets layer to encrypt um, internet traffic between your device and any sort of cloud server. Um, up until now, let's see. The Android IDE has a secure wireless thing that you can actually do this with by from scratch, but it's not the greatest. Um, so um, Andreas actually made a really nice library that can handle a lot of the legwork for you, which is great because with the Internet of Things, you, were, you know, we're seeing a lot of insecure devices using unencrypted channels or they're just, you know, sending plain text around. So this is a really interesting um, library um, that's available. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that, you know, using any sort of um, HTTPS on these microcontrollers tend to take up a lot of memory. Um, some, someone on the YouTube um, video commented saying that it took roughly 40K of heap space, which could be significant. It depends on your application. But overall, this is a very interesting project, and we'll put the link in the show notes for it. But it, it's really nice to see people working on um, easy-to-use libraries to secure your stuff. So... People who aren't, you know, super in the know or knowledgeable can just, can still easily, you know, secure their um, projects. Well, how much memory is on like an ESP32? Ah, crap! I don't even know. You're gonna make me Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! You're supposed to be ready with these questions. Um, would you say I... that this is something that um, <laughs> you would put on every project, or is this something um, that you would want to just secure with certain projects? Um, it it really depends on the application. So it really doesn't matter if you're sending HTTP requests um, to a local server that's within your LAN. Like if you're mm-hmm. doing a home automation setup and you have a server, like a home assistant server or a, an open hab server, and you're just wanting to send messages to that and it never leaves your network, then you don't really need it. Um, it's really only if you're device is sending information outside of your 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 home network or your your LAN. Yeah. And then even then if if you if you care enough about that information to be private or to be encrypted then you should do it. But if you're just sending, you know, random data snippets that may not mean anything then you know, we have to um consider the risk of it getting, you know, found but you don't necessarily have to. Okay. Well, well like an, an interesting way of thinking about that though is um all valuables data are all data is valuable to somebody like i never really thought about um like the nest thermostats apparently those are really common for um potential thieves to monitor houses with because they're constantly broadcasting the um 
data for the heating and cooling of your home for the presence detection yeah and <sighs> they you can track the person's uh life basically by the heat map in their house so like when the when the house is cooled down in the winter or when the house is uh heated up in the summer that's when the that person's not home so that's the opportune time to go rob them yeah and like uh i actually had a uh like a HVAC guy that was working on my furnace. I was asking him about them and he's like, yeah, they're cool and all, but you know, make sure you're good at your network stuff because uh, that's how people get robbed now. <laughs> and he explained all this to me and I was like, ah, oh, yeah, no, that, that makes, makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, internet of things, man. Yeah. You gotta be careful. I mean, it's that Don't whole put thing. Linux on your crop pot. <laughs> <laughs> it's that whole thing of, and we were going to talk about this one time. I remember is um, how secure are you really? Um, right. And it's like technically, like I'm not only thinking about it as my because I do I have a Nest thermostat and it's awesome, but I also have Hue lights and my Hue lights are tracked to my phone, so they know if I'm within five point five miles of getting into the getting home, they all turn on. Or if I'm like leaving and I'm now 0.5 miles away from my home, they all turn off. And so it's like, yep, nope, didn't just think about that till now that, yeah, it, absolutely somebody could track that kind of stuff if they were able to get into my network. So Christian, all my habits. I uh, I heard of uh, some security researchers who have already written a worm targeting smart bulbs. And nice. they, they <laughs> no, so the best part is they actually deployed it via drone. So they flew a drone near the house and then it searched for these bulbs and then it, it would um, inject a, a worm into the bulbs and then it would self-propagate because it's a worm. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty dope. You know, like, I I love security people just for their creativeness and I oh, hate yeah. them for the same reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, oh man, no, that's... Uh, that's brilliant, but at the same time, it's like, why? Just why? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so, Christian, do you want to take the next one? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, David Perry created a modular 3D printed violin that can be modified um, to, uh, or modified based on how it's printed um, to make different sounds. Um, and this was something kind of cool that we found throughout the week. And uh, we were all kind of like, oh, this is really cool. But it really doesn't hit home until you actually listen to it. Um, he has a video up on uh, YouTube currently called 3D Printed Violins uh, Played by Billy uh, in Low Ground. Uh, and if you look this up, um, holy crap. Uh, it starts off by him playing a regular uh, violin or fiddle. Um, and he's just playing some normal just notes along it and then he starts switching between the different violins that has been 3d printed and for what you normally get out of the 3d printed uh instrument uh i.e there has been some 3d printed guitars or 3d printed ukes or stuff like that they kind of sound they're there um mm -hmm. this was something that was like oh wow that actually could be played and it sounds beautiful still yeah. like yeah it sounds really good yeah, like no, it's really good. <laughs> it's incredibly impressive that uh, something like this is this easy to make. In fact, they're they're basically say in the article, uh, all you need is a bow, strings, and pegs, and a fingerboard, and you're ready to go. And it's like I, the the kid in me in high school who wanted to play instruments, but came from a family who was on the lower end of financial, um, freaking loves this because this gives the ability to kids. And families to be able to possibly create something and go in. Because I absolutely could be at least seeing this played at a practice at least. I don't know oh, if yeah. they would allow it in like a concert. But like at a practice, this gives the kids the ability to do that kind of stuff. And this kind of stuff just blows my mind. And I it just like it it makes me love makers like across the world. It's it's so freaking awesome. Yeah. Um, but it when I saw the article, I was like, oh, man, people are going to crap all over this. And then I listened to the video and I was like, wow, <laughs> some yeah. of those sound 
really good. And it's fun because as he's changing them out, um, there's very definite changes in their tone. And you can see the difference in the body and uh, just the different constructions that he did that, that uh, very obviously changed the tone of the instrument. Uh, it was really, really fun to watch the video. Yeah, I, I highly suggest... Uh, if you have a chance, uh, again, it's 3D printed violins played by Billy and Lowground. Um, it's it's incredible to see something like this. And in fact, um, I'm actually watching it again. And something that's kind of interesting is in the background, there's a large orange uh, 3D printed something. And it doesn't look like it's been completed yet, but it hmm. might look like he's attempting possibly a bass. Um, oh, which wow. would be another kind of cool thing to see if he's able to work on uh, and kind of figure those out as well. So look forward to seeing other cool stuff printed from him. Uh, and hopefully we're able to uh, just grow this kind of cool things that you can just absolutely go out and 3D print. So, right. yeah. <laughs> so in uh, in the next thing, um, the mostly printed CNC got some new parts with upgraded strength. Now, for me, as somebody who spent a lot of time building DIY CNC machines, uh, I have a like a love hate relationship with the mostly printed CNC and V1 engineering in in general, because they their their machines are so neat and um, they are so accessible to uh, new uh, CNC enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I hate them because there's no way that those machines are rigid <laughs> and um, can do a lot of the things that people that start out in the CNC hobby want to do. Like, everybody jumps in. They're like, I'm going to machine aluminum and I'm going to make all this money and I'm going to do all these things because I 3D printed a CNC machine and... <laughs> And, and then they get turned off because they don't. Yeah. There's there's just no way. Um, because the machines just aren't very rigid. Um, so I'm very excited that this this project has um continued on and has gotten more strength. And he's doing really cool things like the low rider CNC, which has gotten a couple revisions now. That makes a four by eight machine that rides the plywood that it's cutting, um, uh -oh. and it it does some really really neat things. Um, and the creativity in his engineering is phenomenal. Um, it's just the well, it's just like any of the machines that people build and I constantly tell people with 3d printing you have to manage expectations and as long as your expectations are in the right place I think you'll be thrilled yeah um, and the the new the new parts look really good um, they're they're modeled in a way that they're printable in the proper orientation and he's got the nut seats in some places that make them kind of hard to um, put the hardware in but at the same time it makes them a lot stronger so i i was pretty excited to look through uh his new part libraries and then one other thing um for the news uh last night lightburn uh which is my favorite laser software right now uh released a new revision where they're officially supporting the awc uh 708 and 608 controllers oh nice which, yes you're right yeah hey. be yeah so the uh big laser at the makerspace has uh the awc 708 light which is actually the light object version um and we've been beta testing it there and it's been working great and i've been beta testing it on my laser with the same controller uh, so any of the light object uh controllers that use the um, AWC software and any of the Chinese lasers that use um, the AWC controller, so LaserCAD, that have the Ethernet port are now officially supported by the uh, Lightburn, and I am super excited about it because it's phenomenal. I was able to push my laser to 800 millimeters per second rastering last night with it. That's nice. awesome. Nice. No, it's so excited. fast. <laughs> so fast. So that I also learned that a thousand millimeters per second puts my stepper drivers into protect. <laughs> <laughs> 
So are we going to see like a whole bunch more lasers that are supported by this? Is this generally the software that you, is used by a lot of the Chinese knockoffs or kind of lower end stuff? So there's like three major controllers, actually four. There's um, the Ruida, which has always been supported is what it was originally written to support. And then the Trosen or AWC controllers. And then there's, um, man, the names are escaping me now. There's two others um, that are also commonly seen. And Litro is one of them. And the other one's got a really weird name. Uh, Litro is going to be a ways out. Uh, the other one that I can't think of right now, um, I'll look it up, um, is next on the list, but it's going to be a ways out. It, it took um, probably half a year to get AWC support working really well. So I'm thrilled, though. Absolutely thrilled. Yeah, no, that's awesome, because that's one of the things that we've wanted for our makerspace is to be able to utilize that on our big laser. So that's, that's really freaking cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because now we can go back to full Linux. <laughs> we no longer need the windows laptop sitting around. Yep. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Let's see if I can find this controller. Yeah. Aaron, do you want to talk about the, uh, the last topic there? Oh, uh, I think we're I think we're scratching that for now. I don't, okay. think, I don't think Joe's read it yet. Okay, oh, okay. Oh, uh, do either of you have anything you want to talk about as far as running a makerspace this week? Um, not really. Other than you know, we're uh, in our space. We're getting ready to do our um, officer elections, mm -hmm. and. Uh, this is always a, a big pivotal time for a space uh, just because, you know, you're picking the person who's going to set the direction for the space for the next year. And not only are we doing officer elections, but we just changed up all of our officer roles um, in our bylaws. So like, as a makerspace, we, we are entering so many new grounds in the next 12 months it's absolutely insane we, we moved and we're changing the way our space operates and uh it's gonna be interesting yeah i'm excited to see how it goes oh yeah it's time for something new <laughs> absolutely so. if you guys are interested in seeing how our bylaws changed uh they will be posted on our makerspace wiki which is uh let me look at it is wiki in our slack wiki dot <laughs> river city labs dot space joe told me it wasn't enough places so i changed my slack username to the url <laughs> so now when people try to talk to me they have to search search for wiki i hate it so much <laughs> now now the url is in every channel all the time <laughs> but it's nowhere on our website so don't try to look there because, you know, that's a reasonable we're, thing, right? We're working on it. <laughs> that's too easy. So, mm. you know, while we're talking about dealing with difficult people, uh, we can start talking about maker burnout. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this topic came out as I was venting to Christian about all of the things I had to do uh, this week to support all of the different things I support and how I had seen a YouTube video uh, come up early this week from Angus with Maker's Muse where he was talking about taking like a couple month hiatus from um, his YouTube video or his, his YouTube video creation um, just to uh, take care of himself and get back to a point where he actually enjoyed what he was doing because it had, it had just gotten to a point where making his channel and making was a chore and not fun anymore. And I, I don't think we talk about um, burnout as creators enough. No. You know, everybody's a meat. 
in this day and age where everybody's like creating content and putting it out on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. Um, and you, know, you see all these great people like, um, like Angus and Jimmy Duresta and um, John Saunders from NYC CNC. And uh, man, I'm just naming off people uh, um, that I really enjoy watching. Uh, you know, I'm watching them constantly create and I'm like, man, I need to step it up. I need to do more. I, I need to be making stuff as much as they're making stuff. And uh I, I lose the the fact that social media is a lie. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh but then you know at, at the same time I personally haven't made something that I have wanted to make that was completely a personal project since before we started this podcast. Like I that's how much other stuff I've taken on and then the podcast and then life. And then I I'm constantly burdened with these other projects that I want to be creating, but I don't create because I don't have the, I simply don't have the time. Um, it's not that I don't have the drive. It's just, there aren't enough hours in the day. And at some point I stop functioning from lack of sleep. <laughs> so, um, you know, maker burnout is something that I I think that um, that we should talk about uh, just to be you know kind of responsible. Um, uh, what's the word? Chaperones in the maker world. Yeah, That's not I the mean, right word. <laughs> well, it, it's something that it's like Sherpa. I, so Sherpa. <laughs> It's on your maker like... journey yes i love it <laughs> we are the sherpas um it's something that happens in every every creative community um i know a big one that because i'm i'm huge in the media kind of world um i used to be very involved in that and doing a lot in that world and <clears throat> if you're into youtube at all one of the biggest ones that kind of shook all of that up was Casey Neistat coming off and saying like, Hey, I need to take a break. Um, yeah. like I'm recording 365, 24 seven. He's like, I basically get two hours of sleep at night and that's it. And he was yeah. doing that like for, I want to say it was over 700 episodes. Um, yeah. cause he was recording daily. Um, and he just finally came off and he's like, I'm not spending time with my kid. I'm not spending time with my wife. Like I'm not able to do these kind of things. And it just like strained him. Um, if we look at the writing world, it's writer's block. Um, people just are not able to think creatively and they're not able to actually come up with those things that they used to just on a whim anymore. They're not able to like to access that part of their brain almost. That's why it's a writer's block. Um yeah. And it absolutely can happen in the makers community as well. It can, it can very much just be like, I don't really want to go turn on my tools right now. Um, I don't want to go just make this thing right now. And it could be something where it's like, I know I'm going to have to clean up everything afterwards. And it's like, it, it, it's that motivation um, yeah. of just getting in there and doing stuff again. And that is absolutely something that's real and absolutely something that we struggle with. And I think, um, personally, I, I was talking with Joe about it. And I think one of the things I said, if I did not I wish I would have, um, is the mixture of personal and making personal life and making stuff and, um, or not personal life, work and making stuff. Um, yeah. Joe is extremely creative in his work. Um, having to come up with like new machines that are industry definers for what they could possibly be working on. Um, and, like going from that and then engineering at home and not only engineering at home, but engineering for people at home. And so like you're involved with a troop um, and having to do stuff for them and stuff and like doing cool stuff like that constantly. And so it's like you're getting pulled in all these other directions and you really don't get to work on stuff that you want to personally. Um, and like that is such a huge strain mentally, I feel like that when you don't get to be creative in your own right, that really takes a toll on you. Well, and 
another thing is um it's it's why i've avoided trying to go uh be a maker for a living i've had a couple different opportunities where people have been like you should come run this commercial maker space for your job and i've avoided it because um five years ago now um i was a yoga teacher and not full-time part-time but still it got to the point where yoga which was my outlet and uh the way i uh de-stressed and got out of you know the the daily grind and everything uh it became a huge stress a Mm. huge weight that was on my life and um because of something I had to do for my job, I had to go travel for six months. I had to step down from my teaching position at the studio I was at. And that was a huge weight off my shoulders that like you know, now suddenly I didn't have to go do yoga every week and draw students and do all these other things. And it's been five years now and I haven't gone back to even just having a regular uh, yoga practice like I just completely obliterated it from my life because I was so burnt out on it. And I'm honestly fearful of um, getting to that point with creating because you know, as I get closer and closer to not being president of River City Labs, I am more and more like, oh, I'm not going to have to do this. I'm not going to have to be in space. Uh, it's a smiling face every Thursday. And I'm not going to have to be the face of our nonprofit organization and thinking of new ways to bring in members and thinking of new ways to make all the machines work and thinking of new ways to promote everything. And, um, you know, at the same time, I'm like, oh, I, I won't have to make things. And I can just like, chill out and be me for a little bit but at the same time creating and making things is is me i'm sitting in a basement full of 3d printers and parts and electronics and computers and things i use to create constantly um this is definitely me uh but i'm i'm so burnt on all of it uh, I'm a little afraid of what's going to happen when I don't have to do it anymore. Yeah. <clears throat> so for me, um, I feel pretty much the same way that um, if you have to do it, then it becomes less fun. Um, you know, I, I'm watching a lot of, you know, maker YouTube channels like, you know, Evan and Caitlin and all that stuff. And, you know, that looks oh, awesome. I love their channel. I know. Like, that'd be so cool. Just to, like make stuff in your garage full time. But at the same time, you know, if, if I you go back a year, they have a whole video on this. Yeah. Like, like they, they dropped out for like two or three months because they just wanted to be a couple. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I feel like that would just be anything, whether it's making or whatever your, your passion is. If you make that your job where you need to do it, especially like to, to live and survive, yeah. then it's going to suck all the fun out of it. You know, you know, I I think I've told you a couple of times, Joe, I'm like, I've been interested in doing, you know, maker stuff, like maker services as a side gig. Yeah. But um, every time jobs come up, I'm like, yeah, I don't really feel like I have the time. And if I took this on, you know, I'd have to squeeze it in and it won't be as fun. And then I wouldn't have time to do anything else, you know, if I wanted to. So for me, it comes down to I try to limit my obligations. Um, If I want to make something, I, you know, I, I can just do it. Um, I don't like to, I try not to sign myself up to make things for people, but I like, I'll, I, I make, I make gifts for people all the time, you know, and that's fun, but I don't need to. So right. I think once you cross that threshold where you need to do something, like you said, oh, I'll make this thing for the, for the burlesque troop, or I'm going to do all this and that. And then now your entire weekend is now full, filled up with stuff. And now it's like, well, I have to fill up, I have to do, I have to. I have to meet all these obligations before I can do anything for myself, but then you're all out of time. Yeah. I'm just bad at saying no. <laughs> well, just, and I, yeah, go ahead. The, the, well, 
what I read into is like, well, if I don't do it, somebody else will do it, and they won't do as good a job as I will. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I'm, I'm right, and sometimes I'm not. You know, maybe they would have done a better job, but yeah, yeah, uh, whatever. <laughs> no, I think I can really relate to this a lot more than I'd like um, because this is kind of how I fell out of video. Um, I like my last video project was just it was painful um, and it was a huge pain in the butt and I had a horrible experience for it and it just burned me out. Um, this, it, this is what you were talking about the other night where you were traveling and editing yeah. and like doing like 20 hours of video a day. Yeah. So my, my last, um, my last actual like video project that I did, um, I had a project that I was going to shoot for this, uh, group. Um, and they were wanting a documentary about the travel that they were doing. Um, yeah. and they wanted it done by the end of the trip. Um, oh, man, that's insanity. So it was it was basically shoot during the day and I was shooting for 14 hours to 17 hours a day and then I would edit during the night and I would edit as much as I could come through the video and then sleep for about an hour to maybe an hour and a half before I had to get back up and start going again. And it was just I was living in an RV as we were going on this. And don't get me wrong. Awesome project. It was taking kids on um, the Martin Luther King Freedom Trail that he walked on his way to D.C. Uh, and it was the experience oh, wow. of these kids um, getting to see what Dr. Martin Luther King did uh, along that trip. Incredible experience. I would never take it back. It was it was awesome. How they wanted it done was insanity. Um, and what they were expecting of me burnt me out completely and turned me off the video completely to where when I was done with that, I uninstalled all my video software from my computer. And I was just like, I'm done. <laughs> oh I'm, my I'm, God. I'm not touching it. And it was, it, it hurt me. And I, I haven't been editing since. Now I've wanted to get back into editing, but every time I do, I've had this like aching of like, I really don't want to actually get back. Do I like, do I want to like go at that again? But it was because I was getting paid for it and because I had this standard, it took all the fun out of it. When I was just editing for fun, excuse me, I was doing like, um, uh, shoot, what's the area? Um, there's a uh, really cool Detweiler at Dark Shazam. Um, when I was doing Shazam videos at Detweiler at Dark, funniest videos. They were a bunch of kids doing a marathon. Um, and it was so much fun. I was doing it all for free. And that's what made it fun was when I was able to do it of my own passion and they just allowed me to have fun with it. Freaking awesome. Loved it. It's when it became a job and a hassle and it just, there's this expectation of pressure on it that took all the fun out of it. And it was no longer creative freedom for me. It was a job and like okay. I had to complete it. Yeah. All right. So you just brought me to the point where I think this episode hit. It's like, culmination of I, I, all of these episodes that we try to do I, I i try to end them with like here's how you get over this hump so also, hold three on. quarters of the way through my crawler so i might be getting more creative so joe are you saying us sherpa makers have now led our listeners to the peak <laughs> of, I, of I, this I, maker I'm mountain freedom. As it, we it, reach the summit, Joe, take us. Take we, us to the summit. <laughs> we, we, we've hit the part where there's prayer flags and all of the <laughs> other makers have been. <laughs> so this is something that uh, my coworker Tim and I talk about all the time because we're both at this point. We don't do anything for anybody that doesn't have clearly laid out expectations set by us and clearly laid out compensation that is set by us. And often that compensation is significantly higher than it should be because it's what we like to call, I can't say no anymore money mm. or stuff or people. Like, there are certain people that I would just do anything for because I can't say no to them because I love them or respect them or um, 
you know, just really want to do something great for them. Um, and that's why the burlesque troop gets so much effort out of me because my wife runs it and it's full of people I love. But like that video project, it could have been so much better had you at the very beginning said, no, <laughs> I won't yeah. do that, but I will film every possible second and then I'm going to go back to the RV and sleep as much as I can so I can wake up tomorrow and be as creative and wonderful as possible for you and your kids and in one to two months I'll have the video done when it's something incredible but it yeah. won't be done at the end because that's insanity and no and if you don't accept that you can find a different person um, and like that point where you can finally set your expectations and set your own terms and your projects where you're doing them for other people, I think is absolutely critical to, um, creators that are doing work for other people. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. If, if I had been able to talk to them and be like, this is, this is what I need. This is what, um, I can do to be as most creative for you guys. Um, yeah. it would have been better in all honesty, yep. it would have been so much better than it could have been. Um, and I think, yeah, no, I think that is if, if you at home listening internet do take anything away from this, it's making should always be a passion. If you can make money off of it, just please don't, take that passion away. Yeah. Don't don't get into that routine and lose that passion because if you do, it just becomes a hassle and that no longer is it's it just kind of sucks the fun out of it. But yeah. but it, it, in that same light, I I know we have like a rule about grandstanding, but can I grandstand for a second? Wait, you haven't been? <laughs> What was all know. that earlier? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. I'm three quarters of the way through a crowler, and I started at the beginning <laughs> of the episode. Um, go for it, man. Go for it. All right. Here it is. If somebody's coming to you to create something, it's for a reason. You are worth what you think you're worth. Preach it. it if you think that you're worth $50 an hour or $500 a day or $1,000 a day, charge it. it. You're worth it. What you're creating, if you're putting your time into it and you're putting your full self into it, you're worth it. Don't let somebody talk you out of what you're worth because all they're doing is devaluing you and what you're creating. And all that will do is burn you out. Create what you want to and charge what you need to. There isn't any other way around it. it that is something I've done. I've done performance art. I've done creation. I've, I've done service with yoga. I've done every form of something where somebody undervalues themselves possible. And, it's such a common theme throughout all of it where somebody's like, well, I, you know, I just, somebody's probably better. And I just don't know if I'm, I'm really worth that. You are because somebody is coming to you for your service. And if they're not willing to pay you for that service, they can go find someone else. Yeah. Hey, if you if you undercharge, you're doing yourself a disservice and you're doing your community a disservice. It, it's a huge, huge deal in in all of this, especially right now where the Internet is such a free resource for people to go find other people. Um, the, the minute you undercut your peers. Whoa, where'd my computer go? The minute you undercut your peers is the minute that. Oh, one, you lose the respect of your peers, but the minute you hurt your 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 fellow society and your fellow creators, um, so so don't do that. 
and and that's how you you lead to creator burnout when you're trying to do it for money um yeah yeah and well and it's it's not only that but it's like when you do it for that low amount you're not putting your all into that work yeah and you're not you're not giving everything that you want you're losing i keep saying it you're losing that passion and the passion is what keeps that burnout from happening if you still have that passion for it, you're not going to get burned out because you continue to have fun doing it. You continue to have that spark in your eye whenever you're working on something. But if you start to like, if you take that lower pay cut or you take that lower project where you're not necessarily getting that anymore, you're not getting that like, that true to form spark of yes. like, oh, I love this. I still want to do this. You're going to go like, no, I'm doing this for like crap money. I'm not getting any sleep. I'm not being able to do this like how I want to do it. I have to obey this contract that I'm a part of. It's like then it's not fun anymore. If no. you're doing all of this, then you're 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 losing out on the part that makes making fun and makes making making. And that's like I I can't stress it enough. If you don't want to get burned out, don't do stuff that you don't like. Yes. <laughs> and if you don't want to get burned out, when you start resenting the work you're doing, stop. Yeah, that is huge. Just be honest with yourself. If you're resenting what you're doing, stop. Even if it's just for a while until you get to a point where you're driven to go back and do that. Just stop. That's just generally good life advice. And, you know, that's something I've been trying to live by, which is, you know, if it doesn't bring you joy, then just cut it out. Yep. Yep. Life life is too short. No, Sorry is... for taking you all to church, but <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is good. This is important because it's something that so many people struggle with, and it, I can I I'm looking at our Slack right now, and I can point to usernames that are dealing with this stuff right now. Yeah, it, that Wiki the... Diversity Labs guy. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's got coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and it's it's there's a like I'll I'll call this person out because like they talked to me a little bit about it um, before people showed up on Thursday. Um, but you guys will know. I won't say his name mainly because I can't remember his name. Uh, guy who's working on the uh, the laser that Radiford brought in um, and doing a whole bunch of projects on that one um oh logan yeah logan logan's dealing with this a whole bunch because he's getting to the point where he's wanting to make this a full-time career and he's wanting to work on this a whole bunch and he's investing so much in this and he like every week he's coming in i see that spark less and less he's just getting stressed out and he's having to deal with all these clients and he's getting overloaded already and it's something where it's like man like this was supposed to be fun you were supposed to take the really freaking cool glow forge and just have fun with it. You weren't supposed to make a career out of it. And he's like, he's losing the fun for it because he's like, Oh, now I got to look at cur- like lasers. You know, <laughs> I gotta look at like, I've how been helping. It's going to cost. And I'm I've like, been helping him troubleshoot the laser. He just bought throughout this episode. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> but that's like, yeah, so exactly. It's, it's no longer fun. It's no longer. It's like, yeah. Frick, I got to actually get this thing back online because I have clients that are waiting. It's yep. like, no, like, stop, dude. Yeah. Have we, fun. We had a couple uh, of guys come into the space a couple weeks ago and they're like, wow, you guys have so much cool stuff here. You know, why aren't you guys like selling the stuff you make? Oh, my like, God. Those guys. Like, you guys have these big lasers. <laughs> like, well, you, could, you could just sell so much stuff. And I'm like, no. yeah, but as soon as I start worrying about making money, now I got to value my time. Now I actually have to worry about being efficient. I have to, you know, yeah. get these things properly nested, and I can't waste time. It's got I got to worry about efficiencies, a scale, all this <laughs> stuff. But like, if if I'm not making money, it's like I don't care how I do it. I can just throw it in the middle of the board. Who cares if I waste it? Like, yep, just yeah. just so much stuff you don't have to worry about if you're not trying to make the money. But when you are, then there's a whole you know avenue opens up of things you have to worry about, and that sucks all the fun out of it. No, absolutely. Oh. We're hitting, the, <laughs> we're, we're, we're hitting our time mark. So, like, if you guys take anything away from this episode, it, make her burnouts real. And we're all experiencing it. So, if you're listening to this and you're like, boy, 
This sounds familiar. <laughs> Boy, this is home. <laughs> you you have friends and um you know, you'll get through it. But if you're not doing it for money, it just like kick back and chill out and you know, go play frisbee with your dog or go play some video games or do do something else. It's okay. And more and more people are coming to that conclusion, but let me be the first to tell you that the only way to get less burned out is to stop doing what's burning you out and go focus on something else. Even if it's for like a year, you'll come back to it because you love it, but yeah. it might take a little bit of time. So yeah, you guys have <laughs> things to add. Uh, only that I wish that we were recording the video so I could make gifts of me waving my arms around. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could record video. I so, man, I'm tempted after how passionate I got on this one. I am tempted to record video just so I can make gifts out of me flailing my arms around. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew me and you were going to get into this one bad. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, they, that, that's... That's why we do this. Christian yep. and I have started this like weekly decompression 20 minutes where we just go drink a beer away from everyone else and just go vent about everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's and been then, nice. <laughs> and then we come back and, you know, everything's fine. But it, you need that. You you, yep. you need... You need that decompression, and if making's not it, you need to find out what it is. Even if it's going and hanging out with your buddy for twenty minutes, and you know, complaining about making, that's what it is. Find yeah. it and do it, so you can still be creative and do the things you need to do. Absolutely. So, with that, go find us on the social medias where we have our subreddit makers on r slash makers on tap we've got our instagram we've got our facebook tell us what you guys want to hear us talking about um show us your projects we want to see it and you know if you've got stuff you're burnt out on come vent with us uh it's cathartic to talk <laughs> about the things you're burnt out on with other people. Like that's half the reason I go to maker fair now is to complain about this stuff with other people that get it. So, and we definitely get it. So come hang out and talk with us on the interwebs. Absolutely. So. Yeah. If you guys are looking for friends and you guys need to vent about this stuff or want to talk about this more, uh, we would love to converse with you on all the stuff that we talked about today and have talked about in the past episodes, um, please reach out to us. We are absolutely more than interested in continuing the conversation. Yep. All right. With that, this is Makers on Tap. Keep making stuff. Yeah. See you guys next week. <laughs>